In this video, we're going to talk about a further statistical tool that we'll use um, in order to look at how reliable the mean calculations that we've performed are. Um, we've talked about how to calculate mean and standard deviation, and so now we're going to use both of those to really look at, see, and, and examine how reliable the mean is that, that has been calculated. So in uh, doing a quick review of standard deviation, Again, the standard deviation is showing the spread uh, of, a, of a data set around the mean. And so if we have a large number or even a small number of um, individuals or things that we have counted and we find the average of something. Maybe, for example, we take our class and we figure out the height of everybody in that class and so we have a, a, an average height value. So that would be right here. The standard deviation then shows us the spread of individuals around that average height. And so uh, what that then does for us is it tells us that if we look at the entire population, so our classroom is just a portion of that, but if we look at the entire, entire population, 68% of the population is going to fall within plus one standard deviation and minus one standard deviation of the mean. And so if we were to calculate standard deviation, and you can do this in your calculator, and I have videos that show you how to do that in a TI-83, we can also do it in Excel very easily as well. I have videos to show you on that. Um, but once the standard deviation is calculated, let's say, for example, that our average uh, height is 180 centimeters, and we calculate a standard deviation of 10 centimeters. What that means is that 68% of the population is going to have a height value of 180 plus 1 standard deviation, so that would be 90, 190, excuse me, centimeters, and minus 1 standard deviation, so 170 centimeters. So what that means is 68% of the population is going to fall between 170 and 190 centimeters in their terms of their height. And that can be expanded out further for a standard deviation of plus 2, minus 2, plus 3, minus 3, or plus 2 is 95% and plus 3 is 99.7%, so almost the entire population. In order to actually calculate how reliable uh, the mean value is, uh, we need that standard deviation. And we can use something called the standard error of the mean. Uh, that's the first thing that we need to calculate in order to, in order to look at how reliable our mean value is. So samples are, are collected, and those are indicators of trends in the entire population. And it's, also, it's really helpful to know how close that value is to the true population mean. So let's say, again, that we've, um, we've surveyed our class, and we've looked at and seen how tall people are in that class, and we've calculated an average value. And we want to see how close that average value is, that average height is to the actual or the, to the true average, um, because there could be some variance just based off of the sampling. And so standard error of the mean is a way that we can use to help calculate that. And what it specifically indicates is the error in sampling of the population. And it can also be used to indicate how good a sample is as an estimate of the true population mean. And so the equation for this, SEX is the standard error of the mean, it equals the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, which is the sample size, the number in the sample size. And I'm going to show you here in a second how to actually calculate this in Excel. Once that has been calculated, we can then actually calculate a 95% confidence interval. We've previously talked about how 95% is an accepted level uh, for being confident in values, and so that means 95 out of 100 times, whatever values we've calculated, we are confident that those will be correct or true. And so we can use this 95% con confidence level to calculate how closely the sample mean is to the true population. And what we're going to eventually do is use this 95% confidence interval that we calculate as a way to show uh, the degree, degree of error on the means that we calculate on graphs. Um, we're going to show them as error bars on graphs to indicate the reliability of measurement as an indicator of the true population measurement. And so the equation for this is also pretty, pretty simple. 95% confidence interval equals the standard error of the mean that we just looked at how to calculate times the critical t value. And the critical t value, we've already learned how to look up. We'll need a, crit, uh, a critical t value chart. You'll need to know the degrees of freedom. And then we're also going to use 95% confidence level, or p equals 0 0.05. So let's switch now to Excel, and I'll show you how to calculate both of these in Excel with some numbers. So here we go. We're in Excel, and I've got some data already set in here. And I've got a number of trials that we're looking at. And this is looking at the percent change in mass of solutions 
um, and for some different uh, molar concentrations. Uh, on my data table, it's not entirely correct. I don't have units and uncertainties right now, but for our purpose right now, this will be sufficient. So the first thing that I want to show you how to calculate is the mean, and I believe I've done this in a previous video, but we'll just do it real quick because it's pretty simple. To insert a function into Excel or Google Spreadsheets, you type equals, and then I'm going to use the function of average to calculate mean. Mean and average mean the same thing, and it pops up right away, so I'm going to click average, and then I'm going to highlight all of the numbers in this column. I press enter, and it will give me the average for all of these values right here. Now I want to do this for all of the rest of my different molarity concentrations, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. And rather than typing this in each time, there's a cool trick that you can do in Excel where if you move your cursor over this small black box right here, or orange box in this case, and the cursor changes there to a black plus sign, I'm going to click on my mouse and drag. And what that will actually do is perform the same calculation for all of these different values. And I can check that. Let's check this 0 0.4. I'm going to click on this box here. And I can see it's pulling the average of D4 to D12. So here is column D. Here's 4 to 12. And so it's pulling the average for that. I already have a graph set up. And it's automatically adding these values because I've previously set up that graph. In other videos, I show how to, how to set up those different graphs. And we'll look at that in the later videos. Next, I want to calculate standard deviation. And again, I'm going to click Equals. And I'm going to type in standard deviation, ST. And the standard deviation that I would like to use is Stedva. And I'm again going to highlight our values here. I'm making sure that I'm not highlighting the mean value, because I don't want to include that in the standard deviation calculation. Press Enter. And again, click and drag to extend that same function for all of the following columns. The next thing I'd like to calculate is the standard error of the mean. I'm going to do this by using the equation that we previously saw. Standard error equals uh, standard deviation divided by the square root of n, the sample size. And so to insert this, there's not a function for this, but I'm going to type in equals, and I'm going to select the standard deviation that I've just calculated. So I'm going to click that box, B14 in this case, and I'm going to divide that by the square root of the sample size. And to insert square root, I'm going to put a parentheses, and I'm going to type SQRT. And then for my sample size, the uh, zero molar solution has had nine different trials. So I'm going to do parentheses, nine. I'm going to close the parentheses around that number and then close the parentheses around the SQRT and press Enter. And I'm going to double check up here in my formula bar. B14 is the standard deviation for zero molar. I've taken the square root of nine. So I'm dividing the standard deviation by the square root of nine. Again, I'm going to just click and drag to extend that calculation all the way across for all of these different values. And so now I've calculated. The last thing that I want to calculate is the 95% confidence interval. I'm going to use that or complete that by using the standard error of the mean that I've just calculated as, where, as well as the critical t value. And so to calculate or figure out the critical t value, I'm going to look at the total number in my sample size for this molarity. So I've got zero molar here. And I've got nine samples. So I'm going to figure out the degrees of freedom for that. And in this case, it's going to be n, the total sample size, minus 1. So n minus 1, 9 minus 1 is going to be 8. I'm going to then use a t-test table to figure out what the 95% confidence interval would be for sample size, or excuse me, a degrees of freedom of 8. In this case, here's my degrees of freedom. I've got 8. If I go across, and if I look from the bottom at 0 0.05, and I see where they intertwine or they meet, I have a t value of 2.31. And so what I'm going to do is use that value, 2.31, as my critical t value. And I'm going to multiply that by the standard error of the mean. So let's go back to Excel and do that. So I'm going to type equals. And I'm going to click on the standard error of the mean that I've just calculated. And I'm going to multiply that by 2.31. And I'm going to press Enter. And so there it's calculated my 95% confidence interval. And I'm going to drag that across so that it does so for all of the different values. Now this 95% confidence interval that we've just calculated here is what I will then eventually use to put some error bars on my graph. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a different video um, that you can also watch if you're interested in doing that. The 95% confidence interval, this value that we have calculated, indicates the degree of reliability of the mean. It also helps to tell us um, the uh, how close the mean that was calculated is to the true value of the mean 
and we'll be able to better represent that and show that when we display some error bars on a graph.